I say, it's a bit early, Holmes. Are you expecting anybody? No, boy. No, no, I'm not. Well, good morning, Mr. Holmes. Go, oh, am I glad to see you. Yeah, I'm sorry to come barging in on you like this, but I'm in trouble. See, the situation's a bad one. Oh, it's a real stinker. I'm in dead trouble. Now, yeah, be careful how you handle that. That's a brand new titfa. Okay. See, now, you'll understand when I've explained it to you, see? Now, my name is Eddie Croker, and I'm chin-deep in trouble. Right up to there. Oh, if my poor old grandmother could only see me now. My name is Dr. Watson. This gentleman is Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, Mr. Holmes, you're the only man who can save me. Now, you've got to do something to save me, see? Everything depends on you, you see? My life, my career, my future, but the lot. Yes, well, it all depends on you, Mr. Holmes. Yes, but what, uh, save see? you from what, Mr. Crocker? Well, if you can find the time, perhaps you'd like to sit down. Yeah, 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 yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. No, 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 no. Yeah, murder, I'm afraid. What? Else yes, I've been accused of murder. No. Me! Yeah, and I wouldn't arm the air on a fly's head. Not even on a beaten fly. Yeah, I faint when I see blood. And they go and, they go and accuse me of murder. You know, Mr. Holmes, now, look, you're a man of intelligence and capacities and appetites like... See, you're a man of education. Crocker? Did you say Harry Crocker? Yes, that's right. Here, perhaps you've seen me perform at the local vaudeville theatre. Escape artist extraordinary. No bolts, chains or shackles can contain me. Just like it says on the, bill, on the billboards. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, Mr. Crocker, uh, who is accusing you of murdering what? Who? Well, the police. What? Yeah. Yeah, they come right in and they say, Guilty, Eddie Crocker. Aye. And then they whisk me away without saying another word. Without saying another word, Mark, yeah. I say, Holmes. Yeah. This man is a fugitive from the law. Yeah, is there a picture of me in there? Is it any good? I hope it's my right profile. It's the best. Oh, hey, what do you think of that? It says here that you allegedly killed a young chorus girl named Sally King last night. Killed? I tried to get rid of her. I should say that amounts to the same thing. It also said that you were taken into custody by the police. That's right, yeah, that's what I said. But then, you see, I decided I had to go and see Mr. Holmes. And so, I left. What? You left? Yes. Well, how? Look here, Holmes, this man might be dangerous. Yes, but oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't worry about that, Dr. Watson. Easy going, Eddie Crocker, that's what they call me. Always a smile in a song when things go wrong. Eh? It's the police. They've surrounded the house. You're probably after me. I just stuck in there for a moment, so as not to embarrass you gentlemen. You already have. We're not in the habit of harboring fugitives. Yeah, I wouldn't dream of asking you gentlemen to do anything that was contrary to your conscience. No, I wouldn't do that. All right, Holmes, you were seen coming in here. You're treading on thin ice. Very thin ice. Oh. And what have you to say to this? Yes, you didn't know, Inspector. No, no, it's not my style at all, but uh, if you really want the owner, he's in that... Thank you, Holmes. I had a bad moment there. Harboring criminals obstructing the police in the execution of their duties, giving false statements to the police. That's remarkable. Truly remarkable. Well, I must say, that fellow has the most remarkable flair for disappearing, Watson. Don't you agree? Well, I'd prefer he'd practice somewhere else. Inspector, what's the case against Harry Crocker? He's a murderer. As if you didn't know. Yes, yes, you inferred as much, didn't you? But what are the facts, my dear fellow? He's a performer at the Empire Music Hall. Last night he left with one of the chorus girls. This Miss Sally King. Yes, that's right. Short time after that, she was found in the alley, dead, strangled. I see. Uh, I'd say you had a pretty slim case, you know. The stage doorkeeper heard them quarreling on the way out. And a newspaper boy has testified to the fact that Crocker came out of the alley alone. Not so slim now, is it? I think the strain's got the right man this time, Holmes. And uh, Crocker denied all this? Not at all. He's admitted the truth of every statement point by point. Well, then I don't see what all this... Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, we had a quarrel, all right. Yes, we quarreled. But I never killed her, so may I drop dead. Well, where on earth did you come from? 
Well, Mr. Crockett, let me be the first to congratulate you. Absolutely inspired, inspired. What? Now, tell me, how did you do it? How did you manage it, eh? Hello there. Yes. Oh, simple. See, all you have to learn, Mr. Holmes, is a few basic tricks on, on my business, and the rest is chicken's feed. Oh, Officer, you're under arrest for murder, Crocker. I, I won't warn you any more of your tricks, and I'll be the worst for you. I promise you that. Yeah, Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes, see, Mr. Holmes, that girl was only trying to capitalize on my publicity. Yeah, you know, I gave her a smile maybe once or twice, but you know how these flusers are. Yeah. But that's all. That's it. Yeah, take them yeah. away and try and keep hold of them this time. Oh, yeah, Mr. Holmes, please, please, please. You must do something for hey, me, Mr. Holmes. We'll do our best. We'll do our best for oh, Mr. Crocker. Yes, yes, yes. But you better go quietly now. You yeah. go quietly. Hey, you? quietly? Yes. All right. All right. But don't forget, will you? I shall. You won't forget. No, I you shall. You promise? Don't worry. Okay. Goodbye. Yeah, Mr. Holmes, you won't forget me now, will you? You'll do, you, do your best to save me, won't you? Please, please, promise. Oh, I'm going to put old grandmother going to see me now. Hey. I'm warning you officially, Holmes. Don't interfere with this! <laughs> That's really remarkable, Watson. Absolutely remarkable. Have you any idea of how possibly he could conceal himself in that closet? Don't push Lestrade too far, Holmes. He's been after your hide for a long time. Yes. <laughs> You uh, care to accompany me to the music hall tonight, Watson? Why, are you on the trail of something, Holmes? Several things. First of all, I should like to know why Harry Crocker killed this woman, if he did. And if he didn't, why should anybody want to make out that he did? No, I think this trade's got the right man this time, Holmes. You really? Well, no. we shall see. We shall see. Afternoon, Holmes and I went along to the Empire Music Hall. Not to be entertained, mind you, though I dare say the day gave promise of that. We stopped for a moment to chat with the news vendor who repeated the story he had told Inspector Lestrade. He had been standing on that very spot the previous evening when Harry Crocker passed him, coming from the stage door exit. Crocker had definitely been alone, and what's more, he'd been in a temper. I must say, Holmes did little to break down the fellow's story. Charlie Willis. Uh, I suppose you've come about uh, for Harry Crocker's trouble. Yes, yes, I have. Tell me, is there any other exit from backstage to that alley out there? Oh, none, sir. The only other way out is round through the front of the house. Then anyone going from this area to that alley would have to pass your desk on the way. Yes. I presume you remain on duty throughout all performances? Well, uh, I know what you're getting at, sir. But like I told the police, as soon as Harry walked out, this girl came chasing after him. Ooh. Buzzing like a hornet, she was. And where did you see her next? Oh, not until Miss Zaza came screaming back through that door. I ran out and found the girl lying there, dead. Then I understand that neither Mr. Crocker nor Miss King returned through that door last night after you saw them leave. I'm afraid that's it, Mr. Holmes. Yes, Holmes, I'm afraid Inspector Lestrade has got his foolproof case. Granted, of course, that the inspector himself is foolproof. Miss Zaza, where might she be found now? Or oh, the girls' dressing room. Which one? Oh, they all use the same one. It's the second door on the left, down there. Uh, better knock before you go in. Oh, he shall, sir, I assure you. Thank you very much, Mr. Willis. Good afternoon. Watson. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a pleasure to be of service to you, gentlemen. Yeah.
is it? Oh, excuse me, madam. I'd like to have a word with Miss Zaza. Is that good? Uh, can't possibly. She's busy. We have a show to do, you know. Yes, sir. Ah, 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 here I come in my gondola. La, 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 Evening, Dr. Watson. Oh, it's a real pleasure to see you again. Yes, but talk of the police. I expect they'll be along soon. Yes, but how did you get away this time? Gave a twist and a twirl. Am I the looking one way? I grab the other. Mr. Holmes, have you cleared me yet? Well, not quite yet, Harry, but it'd be easier if we could have a word with Miss Zaza. But unfortunately, some old busybody in there won't let us in. Who? Oh, old oh, Bessie? Yes. You. You wait a minute. Huh? Sorry to inconvenience you, Miss Zaza, but, um... That's all right. I understand it was you who first discovered Miss King's body. Yes, I did. It was just horrible. One minute she was standing here next to me, right where you are now, Mr. Holmes. I could touch her. And the next... Oh, it was just horrible. Yes, of course, it, it must have been. Then you were here when Miss King came off the stage last night, is that right? Of course. She came in here very angry and in a very big hurry. She tore up her costume. Oh, excuse me. Then she put on her clothes and she ran right out again. I see. Uh, was she in a hurry to meet Mr. Crocker? Was she? I don't want to repeat what she said. You understand. No, of course not. I quite understand. Uh, then, uh, just to be quite certain, she rushed in here to change her clothes and then she... Uh... Put on her locket. Lock it. Ah, there he is, gentlemen! Don't let him get away there! Oh, what do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing, you, eh? Eh? You, you let me go, you let me go. What do you think you're doing? Let me go! Here, go! Save me! Here, you're arresting an innocent man. I thought I'd find a bunch of you here together. You have a great deal of explaining to do, Holmes. I should be delighted to, Lestrade. But first let Miss Zaza finish what she was about to tell me. What does she know about her? I was only going to say that Sally wore a locket that Harry gave her when we first opened here. She couldn't wear it during the show, but she always put it on immediately afterwards. Locket? What's all this about a locket? A little trinket. It didn't amount to a thing. Did this Miss King wear this locket last night before she left the theatre? Oh, yes, always. She said she wouldn't be caught dead without it. Oh. Oh. Did you find this locket on the body of the strand? He hasn't changed since last night. We haven't been able to hold him long enough to search Here, I can explain all this, Inspector. I can explain everything because I'm innocent, you see. I'm innocent. Oh, poor Harry. Why did you murder her? And now, we return to the case of Harry Crocker. Don't you think it's morning visitors around here? Even with police permission. Here's the little lady. Okay. And the clothes she was wearing, have you got them? Yes, sir. One beer minute. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Obviously strangled. From the position of the finger marks, it appears she was facing her assailant. Yeah. Yet her fingernails, which are rather long, show no signs of a struggle. I don't follow you, Holmes. Holmes! Did you see what you did? You didn't try to fight me or beat me off. You merely pushed my hands away. Yes, yes that's right. Why? Well, I didn't want to strike you. Why? I didn't want to injure you. But I was choking you. I did tell I didn't take that seriously. Exactly. Well, well, what do you mean? Well, you didn't take me seriously because you know me too well. But say my attack had come at the end of a savage argument. Well, that would have been different. Ah, now you're getting to it, Watson. By Joe Holmes, you mean that the girl in Crocker had had a savage argument, she'd have clawed his face? Yes, but she didn't. 
Then whoever attacked her, she knew very well. And Harry Crocker's telling the truth. And the problem becomes, who is lying? Here they are, just like they come off her. Oh, that's very good of you, but I don't think we shall need them now. And thank you very much for your assistance. Good day. Where are we off to, then? Well, we're going to the desert, where I believe we will provide what they call a attraction. Oh, Mr. Holmes, it's yes. Dr. Woodson. The police have just been asking for you. He... Well, well, you hit them this time, didn't you? <laughs> Harry's obviously escaped again. He's most extraordinary fellow, isn't he, Mr. If you're responsible for this, Holmes... Now, look here, Inspector. Holmes and I have only just arrived here. And after all, it isn't the first time he's given you the slip, is it? <laughs> I'm surprised at you, Dr. Watson. A man of your professional reputation and military background, I'm surprised at you! An excellent portrait of the late Miss King, what, right, Holmes? In happier times, Watson. What's on her? What? Not again, Harry. Don't pop us around, I hope. Well, I think I ought to warn you, Inspector Lestrade's waiting outside. Well, I had to drop in here to give him the slip. Do you know, I never have been able to work out this trunk trick. Now, my father was a wizard. In. Yeah, good thing you happened to come along. It's a fascinating business, Harry. Do you mean to say it's possible to get out of one of these baskets unaided? Oh, my father did it twice a day on the stage. Used to have exhibitions where they locked him inside and threw him in the river. And up he'd come, free and smiling. Great sport, the old man. Bless his soul. He's passed on, then. Last time they threw him in the river. Yeah. I thought so. Get him! Now, let me go, 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 let me go,
about murder, Holmes. A girl has been murdered. That's certainly true, Lestrade. If I were you, I'd devote more time to apprehending the real criminal and stop annoying Mr. Crocker here. That's right, that's right. You stop annoying me. See, you stop annoying me. Now, look here, you. Excuse me, please. Uh, Willis. Yes? Did you want me, Mr. Holmes? Not I, Mr. Willis. But I believe Inspector Lestrade does. For murder. I, I, I don't understand, Mr. Holmes. Then let me explain a little, Mr. Willis. First, there is the obvious connection between you and Miss King. Both of you lived for a number of years in Manchester. Yes, but that doesn't mean that I... The girl's clothes and picture came from Manchester. She joined the show there, her first job as an entertainer. Mr. Willis here wears a Manchester school badge. His desk is covered with clippings of a Manchester cricket team showing a loyalty of long attachment. And if you require anything further, well, he's just admitted it himself. I'd wager, too, that you were instrumental in getting her a job with this company. Well, what if I did? She could dance a little. She was very pretty and... And you thought she was throwing away her prettiness on Mr. Crocker. Well, I advised her against seeing him, yes. After all, I felt responsible for finding her a job in the company. Not responsible, Mr. Willis. Jealous. And jealous enough to kill. That's not true. I, I saw her go out after Harry and... Next thing I knew, she was dead. So you told us. And so the entire case against Mr. Harry Crocker rested upon your testimony. But you overlooked something. What was that? Miss King did go outside to speak to Harry. And they did quarrel. But then he left. And she came back. Is that true? Not a word. She never came back through that door. The sleeves and collar of her dress still bore traces of her stage makeup when it was found on her body. Yet she herself wore no makeup at all at the time of her death. We checked that, didn't we, Watson? Absolutely none, Inspector. Good man, Holmes. Miss Zaza testified that Miss King didn't have time to remove her makeup before rushing after Harry. Yet how else then could she have been found without makeup unless she had returned and removed it? And when she returned, Mr. Willis. I. Well, you've mixed things up. I... Stop him! Don't tempt me, Charlie. I owe you a few as it is. She played me along till she had the job here. <laughs> she didn't care about Harry. Or about anybody but herself. She deserved what she got. Take him out. Now, where's he gone? Hmm? Well, I, I don't know. Listen. Oh, you've done it, Mr. Holmes. You've done it. Eureka. Yes, I've done it. Now, look. By passing this spring here, I get this little wire, I pass it through against the spring-loaded catch on the outside, you see. Uh -huh. By pressing it in at an angle of 45 degrees, I release the catch against that thimble, that arm of the, of the thing, and it unlocks automatically. And then, hey, press